Scott. Hey Scott, my name is Eric. Uh, first off, I'm digging the show. And uh, my question revolves around branding itself. Uh, what is your process of coming up with the actual brand name? Uh, how do you go about doing that? Um, branding is such a big business that companies pay tens of thousands of dollars in order to get branding specific. And it, it, I know it really depends on what category you go into, but in the same sense, uh, you have uh, generic brands, uh, say Walmart, and they own many brands underneath of them, such as uh, Equate, Old Roy, Special Kitty. All those are brands that belong to Walmart, uh, also known as sub-branding. Um, what are your thoughts on sub-branding as well? Uh, but then you have like uh, your garlic press. If I uh, create uh, a company called Pro Garlic and I sell garlic presses, I'm kind of limited. Uh, but if I have one that's called, say, Pro Chef, which I believe already exists, um, then I can do anything that revolves around the kitchen aspect. Uh, but I can't name a, a baseball Pro Chef. I just wanted to know what your thoughts were on the actual uh, planning because the essential basis is uh, find a product, buy a product, put a name on it, and sell it. Um, but that's a little difficult. I mean, there's a lot more steps in between uh, with as far as uh, planning it out and, and thinking through for the long term. So I would love to hear your thoughts, and uh, I appreciate it, man. Hey, Eric, thank you so much for the question. Your audio was a little in and out. I'm still going to play it because I think it's a great question. Um, I don't know. Maybe there was a little bit of a of a Wi-Fi issue or something that was dropping in and out. But anyway, we I, I could hear it. I hope everyone else could hear the question. I'll kind of, I guess, go through and just kind of talk a little bit about what you were asking. And basically how I gathered what you were asking is, hey, Scott, you know, should I go out there and focus a brand on a specific, you know, item like a garlic press, and it's just going to be like garlic press, like university or <laughs> garlic press, like world, right? Like this, this is this is it. We are only dealing with garlic presses and accessories and uh, and things that might be you know included when you think of a garlic press. Like you're you're really narrowing, you're really niching down, which I don't think is a terrible idea. However. There is some different things that I would consider when doing that, okay? When you first are starting, anyone else out there, and my mind has kind of shifted a little bit. My mind has kind of changed since I started this, this whole thing and dabbling in this, and we're actually uh, in the works right now of, uh, of actually using this, this model of an open brand. And when you have an open brand, what happens is you're able to test other products in other brands. And I know my good friend, Greg Mercer, he's done this right from the beginning um, where he's not building a specific brand for that item um, unless, okay, unless it proves that, you know what, this thing has legs, this thing could be something, then maybe we want to then add more products to that brand, but still not like build out this massive, massive brand. There's two different thought processes there. If you want to build out a brand, okay, and and uh, and really like scale that brand and make it where, you know, you're known in the industry for this thing, then yes, you're going to want to really, really hone in on that brand and that brand messaging. I mean, there's a lot that goes into branding. Now, with that all being said, I think in the beginning, we should do a little bit more of the open brand, meaning we have the flexibility of going outside of one niche, right? And how you would do this is you would have an overall brand, right? Like, so it would be like, you know, like you had said, something about, uh, you know, cooking or kitchens, right? If you do something around kitchens or cooking, you can then talk about a garlic press. You can also talk about um, knives. You can also talk about a cutting board. You can also talk about a squeezer. You can talk about a blender, right? There's all these different things that you can talk about, but it's still it's still specific to that that niche or that niche, depending on where you come from. I always have to say that because I have no idea what's right. I don't know if there is a right. But uh, I like saying niche. That's just me. That's that's what I'm going to go with here. Um, so what I would say is uh, 
try to come up with a universal brand in the beginning, okay? A universal brand. It could be even as open as XYZ Wholesale. Now, again, I'd come up with a little bit of a better, clever name than that. The other thing that I want to mention here is I see a lot of people, a lot of people spending months, I mean months, in this process of trying to figure out a brand or a brand name or a website URL, and it's just a lot of time. Guys, we can change that down the line if we want to, especially if we go with that kind of open brand kind of model, okay? Meaning something that you could have other sub-brands underneath. I think that's gonna be the smartest way moving forward. It's going to allow us to test more products, more brands, or more markets, and then this way here, we can see kind of what sticks, and then if we want to, only if we want to, we can then build that out deeper and uh, and make that more of an overall brand. That's only if you want to, okay? You can still have, like I said, your main account, and a lot of people, they get hung up on this, and they're like, okay, well, wait a minute here, Scott. So if I, if I go ahead and I want to get an LLC and I want to, you know, like build out, uh, you know, my, my business, like, you know, how should I do that? Like within my seller's account, I think your seller's account, your one seller's account that you have should be, um, made. So this way here, you can add those sub brands. So I would make that more of a generic. I have a generic sub brand on one of my brands. Okay. Um, so I would make that so it's not specific to that market or that niche, right? I would make it more open. And then if you launch a garlic press or a garlic peeler or any of that stuff, then yes, do one maybe in and and call that sub brand, you know, kitchen something or cooking something, right? Um, something like that. Um, and then if you do something in uh, the sports and outdoors uh, market, well, maybe then you're gonna, if maybe it's in hiking. So then you're gonna have something on your sub brand that would relate to outdoorsy stuff, Right. If you do something with guitars and musical instruments, then it'll want to be on, you know, and on that niche or that market. Right. So that way, there it can be tailored to that. But it's still sold by right your main seller's account, which would be like you know Deals R Us or whatever. Right. And again, I'm just throwing those names out there. Be a little bit more creative with that, but you can always change that too. Amazon even allows you to change that. It's very easy to do. The thing is, is if you do an LLC or any type of, of, uh, of entity that you're building, um, that is a little bit, I don't want to say permanent, but it's it's you're, you're doing all the work to get uh, your LLC, um, your EIN number, um, checking account, all that stuff. That's why you just need to be careful there. If you're the main brand and it's it's more like the open brand style, then you can you know easily add those sub brands because the sub brands are just um, feeding into the main brand. If that makes sense, hopefully it does. So I guess the answer to your question is I would go more broad open uh, on the on the main brand, and then I would do sub brands. And the other thing, anyone listening, including yourself, do not dwell on this part where you just you get stuck here and then you never move on. So many people, they get stuck and they just, they wonder why it's been eight months and they still haven't launched the product or they still haven't gotten started. The problem is you're trying to say, listen, as soon as I get this part figured up out, then I'm going to move on to the next thing. I'm cool with that, but you got to give yourself a timeline. You got to give yourself a deadline. Okay. And you have to, just like I said in the beginning, guys, you have to just start. And can just get moving. Momentum is a crazy thing, guys. If you start to to get some momentum, it just starts to to really keep things moving, and then things start to happen. Okay. And again, I've said this before. It might not always be exactly what you planned, but you're gonna learn through that process. I promise you that. Well, hey there. Thank you so much for listening to that episode of Ask Scott. Now, that was just a highlight from one of our full episodes where I generally answer three to four questions on a podcast. If you want to go back and listen to all of the past archives of not just the Ask Scott session, but all of the full episodes where I do interviews with top Amazon sellers, people starting from scratch and building a business, if you want to listen to any of those episodes, head over to theamazingseller.com and you can find all of that over there. You can also find details there on how you can ask your own question and get it aired on an upcoming Ask Scott session and possibly see it here on YouTube or just on the podcast. All right, so definitely head over to theamazingseller.com. There's tons of resources over there 
for you to be able to build your e-commerce and Amazon business. So definitely go check that out. Now, I just wanted to remind you one thing before I let you go. There's a lot of information out there and some of it is really, really good. But what I want you to remember is you have to not just consume the information, you have to actually apply that information. So take this information that you learned here today and apply it to your business. And this way here, you can get results. As my shirt says, I wear it almost daily. Take action. We'll see you guys.